Hi, John Davenport from Photopadly.com, and today we're going to look at double exposure photography. Um, so recently I've become interested in this style. Uh, it's, it's a little different. Um, I, I think it's a lot of fun to see how these images um, complement each other, how they come out. It's fun to work out um, what images will work well and what won't. Um, there are a lot of ways that a double exposure just doesn't work. Um, but ultimately, I, I think it's a lot of fun, um, and that's why I do it. Um, over the last week or so, I've posted a couple of photos on my blog, and I've asked my readers whether or not they like it, if they want to see more or less, or, or um, really anything. And a lot of people want to know exactly how it was done. So that's why I'm, I'm recording this video here today. Um, I have these two images here. They've both previously, in and of themselves, been posted on Fogopathy.com at one time or another. This is a sunset here with a tree in the background, and this is a black and white photo. Um, one of the first photos I took with my new 50 millimeter lens. And you can see that they really don't have anything in common, but we're still going to create a double exposure out of them. Now, simply just grab my move tool here, and we're going to go into the sunset photo and move it into this black and white photo of these branches. Um, I'm going to just position it here in the lower right hand corner, and you'll notice the first thing is that they're not the same size. So to fix that, we're just going to crop down here, and now both our images are the same size. Um, finally, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this layer zero now. Um, which is the black and white image. I'm going to move that to the foreground. And the reason for that is because I'm going to drop the opacity level of of this layer to bring the background layer um, to the front, or not really the front, just to make it visible. Um, and if I were to drop the opacity of, of this photo here, I would end up losing a lot of this color. Um, so I want to keep all of that while still bringing it into the photo or bringing both images into the photo so I, I found the best way to do that was to drop the opacity of the black and white image um, so there you go that's a double exposure um, there's one more thing that I'm gonna personally add this is completely optional I'm just gonna bring it into Topaz Adjust I, I already have the settings preset for how I think I'm gonna use it um, so we won't get into Topaz that's a different place a different time um, here I'm just going to um, click OK and I can just show you that in general you can still do a lot of your final edits to these images. You can add sharpness, you can um, you can add different different effects around the borders, you can do whatever you want once you get your double exposure the way you want it or the elements in your double exposure the way you want them you can then edit it however you want and it really does bring a, a whole new level to photography. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm hoping that you're enjoying these um, different images. They're definitely not your standard landscape. And part of the reason why I'm doing that is because these images are more unique. Um, I can really create my own style. And I feel like that's better than just taking photographs of the same old thing over and over again. Um, I don't know if you agree with me or not. You can let me know in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, yeah, and uh, look forward to more double exposure photography on Fogropathy.com. Thanks. Bye.